I started hanging out with Puff like back in the day, and I know this story don't make sense, but it's gonna make sense. I would hang out and watch him throw parties, parties for, for <laughs> musical people so I could try to get on a record. So <laughs> that's why Puff and Jay Z and all them were there. They didn't know. But we go, <laughs> we, we go in the studio and he says the song uh, goes. Today we are finally hearing from Oscar and Grammy winner Jamie Foxx after his mysterious health scare, saying he has been to hell. Do you guys remember when actor and singer Jamie Foxx went into a sudden coma for months and almost died? Joe, I didn't want you to see me with a. Uh with tubes um, running out of me and, and trying to figure out. Uh, Do you also remember him confessing how nasty Diddy parties were, that he witnessed everything, and that he played a minor role in planning some? Yo, Playboy, this party cost a million and a half dollars. To throw. I'm like, you are out of your mind. <laughs> and I said, Puff, I'll throw you a party for 400 bucks. <laughs> And how about Jamie allegedly getting cloned after falling sick? Of Jamie Foxx has led some on Twitter to joke that he's been cloned. This, of course, has led the door open. Well, it is alleged that Diddy is behind all the troubles surrounding Jamie Foxx, and now the Oscar winner is ready to speak out. At one point, Foxx was so close with Diddy that they used to party and hang out together. However, the actor soon realized Puffy's strange behaviors and decided to opt out, but not before some damage was done. A number of Hollywood stars, including Foxx, Bill Cosby, and Cuba Gooding Jr., were accused of S. Ewell abuse in November last year as S. Ewell assault survivors filed lawsuits before the New York Adult Survivors Act officially expired. And actor-comedian Jamie Foxx is the latest celebrity facing a sexual assault lawsuit as a special New York law expires. Yeah, and the lawsuit filed Wednesday. A woman alleges Foxx assaulted her at a rooftop bar in New York in 20... Foxx allegedly s assaulted Jane Doe in 2015 at Catch New York Company restaurant in a claim filed in a New York court. In the documents, Doe, the plaintiff, claimed the Academy Award winner was intoxicated when he grabbed her by the arm and proceeded to assault her in the back area of the rooftop lounge. Rumors have it that Diddy drugged Fox, so much so that he lost control of himself. The complaint stated Doe and a friend were seated one table away from the Ray actor, who was having drinks with restaurateur Mark Birnbaum. Doe recalled crowds of patrons gathering and being ushered away from the table throughout the evening, but she and her friend were never asked to move tables. After Doe and her friend asked for photos with Fox, the complaint alleged that Fox proceeded to grab plaintiff by her arm and pulled her to the back area of the rooftop. Once in a more secluded area, Doe claimed Fox placed both of his hands on her waist before moving them under her crop top where he began rubbing her chest. The suit alleged plaintiff was caught off guard and attempted to step away from Fox. Plaintiff noticed defendant John Doe, a security guard of one of the defendants some distance away, who saw what was happening but walked further away. According to the suit, Fox then allegedly proceeded to slide his hands into the plaintiff's pants. The alleged incident never happened, Fox's representative later revealed in a statement. In 2020, this individual filed a nearly identical lawsuit in Brooklyn. That case was dismissed shortly thereafter. The claims are no more viable today than they were then. We are confident they will be dismissed again. And once they are, Mr. Fox intends to pursue a claim for malicious prosecution against this person and her attorneys for refiling this frivolous action. After decades of courting and mixing with the highest echelons of celebrity, influence, and power, Sean Diddy Combs is behind bars following his indictment on three charges for S-traying, racketeering, and transportation to engage in p tie-in, and his former friend is about more fuel into the fire. Breaking news tonight, Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested in a Manhattan Manhattan Hotel this evening after a grand jury indicted the music mogul. His attorney tells CNN that he is currently being processed. The charges are unclear as... According to court documents and witness claims, Diddy orchestrated a far-reaching s train enterprise, earning a threatening reputation for blowing up the vehicles of his adversaries and assaulting his lovers and employees, and more. But how could he have evaded justice for so long? One very important strategy for Diddy, it seems, was to use his relationships with the rich and famous as a shield, Jamie Foxx being one of them. Puffy is a hip-hop figurehead who infiltrated the fashion world. He convinced industry icons including Anna Wintour, Marc Jacobs, and Tommy Hilfiger to lend their voices to his rap album, Last Train to Paris. The album's interludes were a triumph for Diddy, displaying the reach he'd achieved within that industry. What are you doing? Hi, thanks for coming. 
I know I don't have an appointment, but um, I'm, I'm here to ask you about what, what, what's hot and what's in. Some people close to him deny ever seeing him participate in the egregious activities of which he's accused. According to his indictment, these include traying people for the purposes of soliciting S and forcibly drugging a victims into participating in elaborate S performances. Nevertheless, it stands to reason that at some point over the last couple of decades, at least one influential person might have witnessed some of the rapper's alleged wrongdoing. And though some who've worked with Diddy have tried to blow the whistle on him for years, not one of the most powerful people the rapper hosted at his infamous parties has come forward, and Fox may just be the first. One claim that perhaps sheds additional light on the complicity of Puffy's friends appeared in the latest lawsuit against him from former Diddy artist Don Richards, who alleged that the Grammy winner, a ex-girlfriend Cassie, in front of Grammy-winning musicians Usher and Neo, as well as Interscope Records co-founder Jimmy Iovine, none of whom intervened. Danny D. Kane's Don Richard is suing Sean Diddy Combs for alleged assault in the lawsuit of E! News. Don claims the hip-hop artist and music executives Abused her. As for the public, Diddy's use of the public images of his famous friends to dispel rumors that he was engaging in criminal behavior seems to have worked, and for a long time if the claims turn out to be true. Photos of the bad boy honcho, with figures people are likely to trust, or at the very least express disbelief they'd ever associate with a known predator, such as Oprah, Wintour, or Justin Bieber, have been media staples for as long as Diddy has been famous. So, it may prove useful to revisit some of those photos and relationships, to examine just how many powerful celebrities Diddy had at his disposal to create that human shield, and why Jamie Foxx eventually decided to walk away from that toxic circle. The first person to come to mind is actor Ashton Kutcher. We became fast friends, and we used to just hang out and watch football together. And he came over and I was like, I'm going for a run. He's like, oh, I'll go for a run with you. And so he comes. Kutcher and Diddy's friendship is an old one. In the mid 2000s, the pair were so close that they took to touting themselves as the new Rat Pack alongside Jamie Foxx. In a 2019 Hot Ones interview, Kutcher told host Sean Evans that I've got a lot I can't tell about his friendship with Puffy. He could be forced to speak up soon, as the Daily Mail claimed the star was expecting a subpoena about Diddy's wrongdoing. Then there is Anna Wintour. Wintour has been photographed parting with Diddy several times. Appearing with the rapper and sending him that coveted Met Gala invitation contributed significantly to his acceptance into the upper reaches of the fashion world. Their friendship extended to plenty of Vogue coverage for the rapper, who has enjoyed regular features and photo shoots in the magazine for decades, the most famous of which likely was 1999's Puffy Takes Paris. Diddy ultimately developed such a complex about his place in the industry that he allegedly told his employees, when you speak to me, you should imagine that you're talking to Karl Lagerfeld, as one anonymously told the Daily Beast in June this year. You're doing this big thing, Fashion's Night Out. Correct. And Correct. it's going on all over the city. Yes. And, and, and you want the people to come out, but as they come out, they, they need to know what's... Another big name who is alleged to have been in Diddy's circle is Prince Harry. Harry's buddying up with Diddy could undoubtedly give one the impression that his power extends worldwide, as the British prince has been photographed hanging with Diddy on a few occasions. Jennifer Lopez is another big name who is likely to shed more light on Puffy's past behaviors. Oh, you know, I didn't. I thought he was like, you know, ick. I didn't like him because, you know, I, Sean and I were very different that way. When she dated the rapper between 1999 and 2001, Lopez wasn't yet a megastar. She starred in Selena, her first major movie, in 1997. She was arrested with the disgraced mogul following a shooting at a nightclub in Manhattan and was later released with Diddy without charges. She hasn't made a peep about the allegations against her ex-boyfriend, though a source claiming to be close to the singer told the Daily Mail after the Cassie video that Lopez wouldn't be speaking up about him, as it's not her story to tell. Next up are the Kardashians. Members of the influential clan have been frequent guests at Diddy's excursions and parties for years. So who was with you this weekend? A bunch of my friends. Diddy, Quincy... Justin Bieber, <laughs> so far so good. Montana. Several of them were photographed arm in arm with him as recently as 2019. Whatever one thinks of the way their fame came to be, their inclusion in Diddy's orbit has an effect. 
Oprah Winfrey, the media mogul, has also been linked with Diddy. The renowned host has been buddy-buddy with Puffy for years, further creating a shield of powerful people, and not even the young are spared. Diddy was a mentor of singer Justin Bieber's when he shot to fame at just 15 years old. Though the internet has long circulated rumors that Bieber may have been privy to some inappropriate things while in Diddy's circle, the pop star hasn't spoken about his relationship with the former mogul, even amid all the allegations that have emerged over the past year. Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Paris Hilton is another powerful person who seemed to give Diddy her stamp of approval by attending his lavish parties over the years. As an abuse survivor and advocate for young people, Hilton has been strangely silent about the accusations against him, even though she's posted about having an epic time hanging out at his house. And then of course there is Jay-Z rapper and mogul Jay-Z is yet another powerful person known to have maintained a friendship with Diddy, as both of them emerged on the hip-hop scene around the same time. They even evaded jail time in the same year, 1999. Later, each made entrepreneurship, philanthropy, and the fusing of luxury industries with hip-hop major facets of their personal brands. Jay has regularly participated in charity events and performed on stage with Diddy, and there's no shortage of photographs showing the two men sharing space over the last 30 years. And yet, Jay-Z has never offered any public thoughts on his friend's downfall. Rapper 50 Cent, in his taunting of Diddy, has noted that Jay-Z seemed to abandon Combs amid the allegations from his various lawsuits. With all those names remaining silent about Puffy's past misdemeanors, Jamie Foxx is willing to let the cat out of the bag. A few years ago, the actor vividly illustrated how Diddy used to party. Foxx is a late-night hot seat favorite, and in 2018 he stopped by Colbert to talk about, among other things, teaching Diddy how to party on a budget. I started hanging out with Puff like back in the day, and I know the story don't make sense, but it's gonna make sense. <laughs> I would hang out and watch him throw parties. After starting a friendship with the rap mogul by posing as a videographer, they started partying together more frequently, including parties Diddy himself would throw. I would hang out and watch him throw parties, he threw a party and said, yo, playboy, this party costs a million and a half dollars. I'm like, you are out of your mind, he said. I said, Puff, I will throw you a party for 400 bucks that will rival this party. Fox says Diddy was a bit offended at first, but eventually went along with it the next time he was in Los Angeles. He called and said, yo, Playboy, I'm in town. Make it happen. So I said, cool, he said, adding that he went on to invite 200 of the coolest people before Diddy finally arrived. I said, Puff, look over there on the dinner table. I got Kentucky Fried Chicken. I put it on a nice plate. I got Coca-Cola. I put it in a pitcher. We are at $208 and we are killing right now, he said. Besides Diddy, other guests at the party included Missy Elliott and apparently then unknown Jay-Z, Kanye West, and the Neptunes. He doesn't specify what year the party took place, but since Kanye's come up would have happened several years after Jay-Z and the Neptunes were already established, he might be blending a few crazy party memories together. Fox says he hosted plenty of his infamous house parties back in the day with a specific goal in mind. I was trying to get into music at that time so I would throw parties for a reason, and because Diddy was so famous in music, I had a studio in my house, he explained. Of course, Fox would find his way from acting to music and go on to win tons of awards, so the parties were all worth it at the time, but not anymore. That aside, you may also have heard about Jamie Foxx's incredible house party after hosting the 2018 BET Awards, but if you're worthy of an invitation, you'd have known that Fox has been throwing these types of parties for a long time. In fact, he wasn't just hosting some of the biggest artists in music. He was interviewing them and having them perform, a concept that he's now sold to Grey Goose for his off script series. What I've always wanted to do is put artists in the same room, he said in an interview with Complex, recalling early parties where he had Diddy come through and give motivational speeches on a mic. He also remembers meeting Jay-Z and Farrell early in their careers at some of his parties. Like the first time I did something like putting artists in front, it was Puff back in the day when Puff was like, we ain't going nowhere days. Dang, 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 And I remember- I've done that now for Drake, Ross, 2 Chains. Anytime someone is celebrating, I call it on my balcony, he said. According to Fox, the Drake event came early in his career as well. It was 2,500 people, and I would say 2,000 women counted. Drake shows up, it's his first album, so the clothes didn't fit, didn't have the tailor yet. 
I had a drive-in poster of his picture with the pea coat. After interviewing the rapper, Jamie remembers telling him he had to perform. When Drizzy wasn't sure what to do, Fox says he urged him to sing something, to which he agreed by busting into Find Your Love to a very warm reception. Place goes up in flames. I had a concert pianist show up at four in the morning and play all of Drake's music unplugged, and then we rapped on it, he remembered. It definitely sounds like something a lot of Drake fans would have liked to see. If you can all remember, once Fox started talking about Diddy parties, he mysteriously fell ill and went into a coma. We're going to turn now to Oscar winner Jamie Foxx's health battle. The actor has been hospitalized for more than a week after suffering what his daughter called a medical complication. In April 2023, Jamie Foxx's daughter, Corinne, announced that her dad had experienced a medical complication and was in the hospital. Although Corinne said the actor was on his way to recovery, she didn't reveal what exactly happened to her father, leading to months of speculation about his well-being. Three months later, when the actor addressed the incident for the first time, he alluded to having worried about whether he'd survive or not, but he kept most details of the ordeal private. Later, the Oscar and Grammy winner opened up about the mysterious medical emergency. I went through something that I, I thought I would never ever go through. Months after battling a mysterious illness, Jamie Foxx is back. I didn't want you to see me. In July this year, a video of Fox talking to fans about the ordeal made rounds on social media. NBC reports that it's unclear when the video was recorded. In it, Fox says that on April 11, 2023, he experienced a bad headache and asked my boy for an Advil. Then, Fox says, I was gone for 20 days. I don't remember anything. The actor's sister and daughter took him to a doctor who administered a cortisone shot before another doctor. Said there's something going on up there. I won't say it on camera. The comedian hasn't shared many details about the incident or his months-long recovery. Last July, he said, I went through something that I thought I would never ever go through. I know a lot of people were waiting or wanting to hear updates, but to be honest with you, I just didn't want you to see me like that, he said at the time. I want you to see me laughing, having a good time partying, cracking a joke, doing a movie television show. I didn't want you to see me with tubes running out of me and trying to figure out if I was going to make it through. The actor made his first public appearance since his hospitalization in December last year when he attended the Critics' Choice Awards. I think, uh, everybody. Um, I've been through something, I've been through some things. You know, it's crazy, I couldn't do that six months ago. I couldn't actually walk. It feels good to be here, he told the audience. I cherish every single minute now, it's different. This spring, Fox promised to share more about what happened and seemed to tease some sort of comedy special. I've gotta do it my way, he said. I'm gonna do it in a funny way. We're gonna be on the stage. We're gonna get back to the stand-up sort of roots. Thousands of Fox fans were convinced that his sickness wasn't natural and that Diddy was trying to silence him. For decades, Diddy Combs presented the image of a wealthy black music mogul who broke business barriers, threw lavish parties, and even created iconic TV moments. But behind the scenes, prosecutors say, was a more sinister picture with allegations of violence, S-traying, and severe abuses of power. Throughout his career, Puffy dominated music, television, and fashion, amassing a fortune worth hundreds of millions of dollars. In public, he was a shrewd music producer, generating hip-hop hits under his Bad Boy Records label, which he founded in 1993 and helped establish him as a cultural magnate. Savage! I'm a savage! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I want, I'm going to get! Whatever I want, I have to get! He was at the center of one of rap's most notorious, and deadly, beefs between the East and West Coasts, culminating in the deaths of Tupac and Notorious Big. He capitalized on hip-hop's shift into mainstream culture at the dawn of a new millennium. His All About the Benjamins was parodied by Weird Al Yankovic. He famously dated Jennifer Lopez when she made a splash on the red carpet at the 2000 Grammy Awards in an iconic Versace gown. On the surface, Puffy presented himself as the fun-loving producer who danced in music videos and the tough business mogul developing fresh talent. But no, he wasn't. In private, prosecutors allege in an indictment unsealed recently that Diddy and his associates wielded his power and prestige to orchestrate Essuel emotional and physical abuse.
affects the people around him. While the rapper's explosive temper was an open secret and rumors long swirled about his S life, experts say his power and influence have shielded him from accountability for years of alleged illegal activity. The rapper was arrested and charged with S traying, racketeering, and transportation to engage in P Tyon. It came after months of lawsuits and several allegations of S gender violence, misconduct, and other serious illegal activity that took place over several years. He pleaded not guilty a day later, and a judge denied him bail after U.S. Attorney Damian Williams argued Diddy was a flight risk and a danger to the community. The rapper is currently being held in the Metropolitan Detention Center in New York and is on procedural suicide watch, as is typical with high-profile clients. The charges stem from Diddy's hours and days-long SUL performances called F-Offs, which allegedly included coerced S-Acts that the rapper is accused of orchestrating and recording. The indictment said he sought to fulfill his SUL desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. Combs relied on the employees, resources, and influence of the multifaceted business empire that he led and controlled, creating a criminal enterprise whose members and associates engaged in, and attempted to engage in, among other crimes, s trawing, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice, it reads. The indictment listed Diddy's security staff, household staff, personal assistants, high-ranking supervisors, and others among the associates who made up a criminal organization, which the indictment calls the Combs Enterprise. Diddy and these associates allegedly engaged in forced labor, s Ewell coercion and traying, drug offenses, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and other crimes under the rapper's leadership. Since late 2023 and as recently as last week, several women and some men have filed lawsuits against Puffy, alleging everything from abuse to s trawing. A flood of lawsuits came after the rapper's former girlfriend Cassandra Cassie Ventura sued him in federal court in November last year, accusing him of years of abuse throughout their 11-year relationship, during which, she said, he exerted complete control over her. Diddy and Cassie were first romantically linked in 2007 and split in 2018. She and Combs settled the suit a day later but did not disclose the settlement terms. At the time, the music executive denied the allegations. Singer Don Richard, Diddy's producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, several unnamed women, and a Michigan man have filed lawsuits against the disgraced musician, accusing him of various forms of abuse and misconduct. He has denied the allegations, and a judge halted a $100 million judgment in favor of the Michigan man, Derek Lee Cardello Smith, in order to hold more hearings. Before Cassie's allegations last year, Diddy's reputation had remained intact despite all of the accusations, legal troubles, and rumors that had trailed him over the last three decades. His behavior had long fueled social media chatter among fans and artists, including rivals and those who had worked with him. But the accumulation of assault charges, filmed outbursts, and erratic behavior capped by Cassie's allegations in November finally tipped the scales. That it took so long for Diddy to face legal repercussions and public rebuke speaks to the power of his celebrity and the image he had maintained since his ascent. But everything comes to an end, and it's an epic end for a man who once considered himself the ultimate godfather of the music industry. As to whether Jamie Foxx will take the stand when the time comes, nobody knows, but time will tell. And that's it from us today until next time. Thank you for watching.